Hey everybody, this is Fully Off and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. You might recognise the building behind me. That's the 1.13 Villager Trading Hall, which, as you know, is broken in 1.14. Well, today I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to get it working in 1.14. Now, this video will be quite long and I make no apologies for that because it is vitally important that you follow the instructions I'm going to give you if you don't there's a very good chance that your villagers will be in the wrong place, they'll be trying to find the wrong workstations, uh, or there won't be a workstation, and it just won't work. So, let's get stuck in. Now, most of these librarians in here have been traded with all the way up. As you can see, one of them's actually got quite a decent decent mending trade. But I'm probably not... Oh, there, 18. Well, it's not a decent one at all. But anyway, he's got, uh, he's got a mending trade of 18. Uh, so, and that's just to show you that they will keep their uh, their status and their trades once you upgrade to 1.14. So if you've got a decent mending villager in there, you should keep him uh, when you upgrade. But before you upgrade to 1.14, you have to pop around the back and we have to get rid of all of these cauldrons. Cauldrons are a workstation for villagers in 1.14. They're a leather workers workstation. Now, if you upgrade this to 114 and you've got librarians in all librarians in there, it, it shouldn't cause you a problem to start with. However, if you decide to change one of the librarians later, maybe he just doesn't have a very good trade, uh, or you decide you don't want a librarian anymore, you want a cartographer or you want a, a, an armor or something like that, if you get rid of him and break his workstation, his lectern at the back, if you then bring in an unemployed villager from your villager breeder, it's very likely he'll take the profession from the cauldron. Okay? And then he'll become a leather worker. So in order to stop that from happening, we need to get rid of all of these cauldrons. Okay? So what you need to do then before you do that is put a furnace... On the back of all of the cauldrons like that it needs to be there all right now if, if you've got if you've got a few spaces in there uh, if your trading hall isn't completely full then some of these cauldrons will be down at the bottom okay they'll be down there but your furnace still needs to be there still needs to be on the same level as your comparator all right, and then you need to put an item in each one of these furnaces. It can be any item. Doesn't have to be. Uh, doesn't have to be something that will normally go into a furnace. It just has to be in the furnace because the comparator at the front is going to pull a signal out of it through a solid block. And then once you've done it, just double check, because if you don't, if it doesn't have an item in there, the comparator won't be able to pull a signal out of it. It means your trapdoors at the front won't work and villagers will start piling up on top of each other. So just double check. Now, once you've got all those furnaces uh, with an item in them, you can then break all of the cauldrons. Now, wherever there was a cauldron, replace it with a solid block. So as I mentioned, if you've got empty bays at the front, the cauldron will be down the bottom against a sticky piston. If it's there, replace it there. If the, the cauldron's at, at the top and there's a, a villager in your trading hall, then replace it at the top. So wherever there was a cauldron, replace it with a solid block. Okay, and then you can also double check if the, if the block is at the top, you can also double check that there's an item in the furnace because if there isn't an item in the furnace... That comparator will be off. And that's a mechanic we use in 1.14 to uh, ensure that the, the trap doors are opened and closed and that allows the, the villagers at the bottom to fall down. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now we've done that, we need to get these villagers out of the trading hall. What we can't do, we can't update to 1.14 and then simply pop out the glowstone behind it and stick a, le a lectern behind there. Because of the way uh, villagers 
detect workstations, if you were to put a lector next to that villager, that's not necessarily the villager that's going to be associated with that lectern. If we put a lectern there, it could be this villager that detects the lectern first or or this one or this one. I, I, I'm sure there's a, a calculation for figuring it out. It's got something to do with the north and the west and the, the, the bottom and the top and the sphere around the, the villager. But I found that it's 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 difficult to predict and the easiest thing to do is to get all of these 48 blocks away from a, a point of interest from a workstation so that's what you need to do first all of these guys need to be moved out of the way so if you've got this this set up obviously make sure that you've clicked it so that your villagers aren't going to go off and be killed and then you need to just transport these 48 blocks away Okay, it can be in any direction, can be back, it can be, you know, left, right, but it can't be up or down. All right, for some reason, uh, and I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I, in testing, I've not been able to get my village of 48 blocks above a point of interest and uh, and for him to forget about it. It's got something to do with with uh, being able to pathfind to the... Uh, to the point of interest. So if you were to stick a point of interest 48 blocks up in the air from here, he wouldn't be able to path to it. Therefore, I, he, he doesn't recognize it. I believe that's how it works. But anyway, um, I found it much easier and much more reliable to, to get the villagers away on the X and Z coordinates 48 blocks away. So make yourself a little area. I say 48, but you know, you're probably safer making sure it's at least 48 i think 48 blocks is is about there and that's from the the closest villager okay and then i've made a little area i put some water in it and now i'm going to send all of these villagers down there into the into the water So now they're all at least 48 blocks away from, from the trading hall. Now we can go ahead and upgrade to 1.14. Okay, so here we are in 1.14. And as you can see, all of these guys are down here. Now I have noticed that the uh, there is one villager in here that no longer has a profession. Now he must have been, I think he was the one that was right at the very end on the left. He was the one that we hadn't traded with. So although he was a librarian, we'd not traded with him. Therefore, he's lost his profession, which is fine, which is which is no big deal, really. So what we need to do now is we now need to start sending these guys back into into the trading hall. Now, if you're on a single player world or you're on a. On a server and you're OP, if you've got cheats enabled, you can actually look to see where they're points of interest are their workstations are so if you look directly at, uh, directly at a villager and this is only if you've got if you're op or you've got uh, cheats enabled on your single player world if you do a backslash and then type data and then get entity and then because you're looking at that villager his unique id uuid appears in the list so you just press tab and then you want to type brain with a capital B, brain. That'll tell you his memories. That'll tell you where his workstation is. Now, at the moment, he doesn't have a workstation, which is ideal. It's exactly what we need. But as I say, you can only do that if you're OP or you have cheats enabled. So now what we, what we want to do is we want to push one of these guys back onto the rails that are going to take, the, take him back into the... Back into the trading hall. Now, a villager. If we were to put the trading, if we were to put the uh, the point of interest down, the uh, the the lectern. 
we were to put it down anywhere in there, as soon as that villager, the new villager, gets within 48 blocks of the lectern, it'll turn into a, uh, it will uh, associate himself with the lectern. Okay, so it's best to always get the villager into the bay where you want him before you start giving him a lectern. Okay, so we've got him in there. We're happy with him. He's got quite a few decent trades. Silk touch 11. Very nice. He's my mending for 18 villagers. So there you go. So now what we need to do is break the glowstone behind him and give him a lectern. All right, so now he's going to associate himself with that lectern. And again, if we look at him, and again, you can only do this if you're OP. Data get entity that brain. You can now see that his, uh, his Minecraft job site is at minus 6188. And if we were to press F3, now looking at the lectern, we'll see that we are now looking at, on the left-hand side, looking at block minus 6188. So if you are OP, you can actually see where his workstation is. But if you're not, and you're, or you're playing on a server and you're not OP, you wouldn't be able to do that. I can only do that because I'm admin. Uh, so don't rely on being able to do that. So once we've got one, one in, we can then go down here and we can get another one. Now, this is a, a long, laborious. Let's get this guy here who's unemployed at the moment. I know this is this is long and laborious and it's time consuming. We'll get him in a second. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. But it's vitally important that you do it, because if you if I were to now just. Spam down, if I were to break all of those blocks behind there, the, the glowstone and put down a line of workstations there, a line of lecterns and send the next villager along, he would associate himself with this lectern here, but he would fall in this bay here. And he will never be close enough to his lectern to be able to replenish his trades. He has to be right next door. If that guy was associated with a lectern there, he wouldn't be able to replenish his trades because he's just too far away. He has to be right next to it. Okay, so don't go throwing down a load of lecterns and then sending your villagers in trying to be quick because because it won't work it'll break and then then you'll have loads of librarians in there loads of lecterns and you won't know why they're not replenishing their trades and and you'll have to do you'll have to repair it and i'll show you how to do that in a second anyway so we'll throw this guy in now because he's the only one within 48 blocks of here now he's, with, now he's within range. We can actually put the lectern there. And he's now going to associate himself with this lectern. And I'll just show you again. If we look at him and if we do the data. And I'm just doing this to, to show you. And then his UUID. He's now associated with minus 6187. And if we look at the lectern and press F3, we'll see that we're looking at block minus 6187. So now you've got to do this with all of them. Long and laborious. Yes, absolutely essential. Nevertheless. So I'm going to get a couple of these guys in. And then we'll have a chat in a second. Now, I just want to point out that we can have them 48 blocks away because none of those guys there are associated with a, a workstation already. Then none of them have got a, a place of work, a point of interest associated because we've upgraded from 1.13. None of them have got a point of interest. If they had got a point of interest, you'd have to move them 96 blocks away in order for them to forget about their original point of interest. I'll go over that in a second, but I just want to point that, this out. OK, so if they've if they've got a point of in, if they're already associated with their workstation, you've got to transport them 96 blocks away. If they haven't got uh, a workstation already and you've, it's brand new from a 1.13 upgrade to 1.14, they won't have. Then you can send them 48 blocks away. All right. So we've got a we've got a new guy in there. He's now been 
associated with that workstation. Okay, so we've got all of the villagers back in here again, all of the librarians back in here, and I've made, I've deliberately made an error. Okay, so all of these guys, all of those guys are next to their workstations because I was very meticulous and very careful. I brought in a, a librarian, I waited for him to land in his bay, and then I put a lectern behind him, so he was associated with that lectern. With the last two, I put the lectern down first, and then brought in the librarian. So that librarian now is associated with that lectern and that librarian is associated with that lectern. Okay, now I've traded with this guy. He's locked his, his, uh, his paper trade. That guy's locked his paper trade. That guy's locked his paper trade. Now, library, uh, now sorry, now villagers will only upgrade their trades between 2,000 and 9,000 ticks every day. I think they do it at, uh, in the morning and then in the evening. OK, so these guys now won't unlock their trades until it gets to to 2000 ticks. All right. So if I change the time. Change the time to 2000. You might have heard there. It sounds like paper rustling. All of these librarians now have reset their trades, including this guy. This guy's now upgraded, uh, reset his trade. He's got the new price for paper, but it's unlocked. However, these two guys haven't because they're not stood next to their own lecterns. As I mentioned, his lectern is there, his lectern is there. So the point being, if you've got, if you do trade with all of the your villagers and there are a couple in here that don't refresh their trades, then they're not standing next to their workstation. If there are only two in there, it'll be pretty obvious to know which ones they are. Okay. So then all you need to do is swap them around. So because I know that villager needs to be stood next to that lectern and that villager needs to be stood next to that lectern, I just need to swap them around. So I'll just send, if I send this guy up there first, make sure it's, he's not going to die. If I send that guy up there first, and then send him. We're now going to switch them around. So when this guy gets down to the end, he's going to fall in in next to his own lectern. And then the other guy is going to fall in next to his lectern. OK, so they're both now next to their own own lecterns. He's already reset his trade. And so has that guy. So we now know that they're stood next to their correct lecterns which is perfect. So as long as you're meticulous and you're very careful, uh, it's uh, it can be done and it can be done relatively easily. It is a little bit long winded. And as, as I mentioned, I make no apologies for the this video being quite long winded. But it uh, if you get them mixed up, then you will cause yourself a problem. So now we've looked at the upgrade. Let's look at what we need to do if we decide that we no longer want one of these villages. So let's just say that this guy here, Infinity, Thorns and Punch, we don't want his trade. And I'm going to forget which one it is, actually. One, two, three, four, fifth one in. We don't want his trade. We don't want the, the village there. So we'll we'll flick that so he'll go and, and get killed. And then we'll dispose of him. One, two, three, four, five. You, mate, don't want you. So now we've disposed of him. So that lectern then will become free because he's died. He's no longer associated with that lectern. So then we need to go back to our villager breeder, which remember our villager breeder has got to be 160 blocks away because if it isn't and we transport a, a baby villager or an adult villager from the breeder straight into here, if he's not 160 blocks away from the breeder, he won't forget about his bed and it's going to break your breeder. OK, so make sure that this is 160 blocks away from your breeder if you're bringing them directly in from it. So we'll assume our village breeder is all the way over there. We'll lob down a, I'm hoping this guy won't run away. There you go. So we've got ourselves a brand new unemployed villager. We've got a, a workstation in the trading hall already. But only make make sure you only do this if you've got one workstation in there. Don't kill five villagers in there and then send 
a new villager in because he will associate himself with the first workstation he sees. Okay, so when you're getting rid of villagers in your trading hall, do it one at a time. So we've got our unemployed villager. We'll send him. He'll get within 48 blocks. He's already he's already found the uh, the lectern. And then he's going to go around and drop in next to there. So as I mentioned, if you if you don't try and be clever, don't try and cut corners. If you were to get rid of the first five villagers there because you don't like them, and then think you can leave the lecterns there and send in another five villagers. The villagers will come along, they'll associate themselves with the first lectern they see and they probably won't be in the right order. OK, so so when you're changing villagers over to refresh the villagers, do it one at a time. There you go. And you heard him refresh his trade. So there he is. Now, if I wanted to, because we've not traded with this guy yet, if I wanted to ch change him to a cartographer, I'd just break his workstation. He becomes unemployed again. I need to get myself out a cartographer's table. A cartographer's table. Put my cartographer's table at the back. And then after a few seconds, he'll become a cartographer. OK, so as long as he hasn't been traded with, we can change his trades. Uh, we can change his profession. Uh, so I've made him a cartographer. Actually, I don't want him to be a cartographer. I do want him to be a, a librarian. So we'll break his cartographer's table again. He'll become unemployed. Now, he'll only become unemployed within 2,000 and 9,000 ticks. OK, so if we if we change the ticks to zero. Put him down a, cart, uh, a lectern. He'll associate himself with the lectern. But now if I break the lectern, it doesn't become unemployed again because he's not looking for the table. He's not looking for his point of interest because it's not between 2,000 and 9,000 ticks. If I change the ticks now to 2,000, he starts looking, can't find his workstation. And because we've not traded with him, he becomes unemployed again. OK, so don't if it's if it's night time and you want to trade, cha if you want to change trades. OK, so it's 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 gone 9000 ticks and it's before 2000 ticks. If you break his workstation, let me do it again, change it to zero and you break his break his workstation and he doesn't become unemployed. It's not broken. OK, it's because it's not between 2000 and 9000 ticks. All right. So we'll put the, the workstation back again, change it to 2000 ticks. He's now associated with that workstation. But as soon as we start trading with him, if we were to break his workstation now, he wouldn't become unemployed. And then if we put his workstation back down again, Although he would be associated with the workstation that was there, he wouldn't be associated with his new workstation. And this is where it gets really, really complicated. So if you've traded with him, don't break his workstation. It's, I suppose is what I'm saying, because if I if we were to break that workstation now, in fact, I'll do it. I'll break his workstation. All right. He still remains a cartographer. I'll put his a workstation back again now his workstation was in that spot but it's not that workstation so if I now go down here and I generate another villager if I send another baby villager in or sorry another adult villager in like this he will become associated with that new workstation we've put down you can see he's already turned into a cartographer All right so he is associated with that workstation. He is associated with that workstation. So we've broken the system. OK, and so do not. And I repeat this several times. Do not break the workstation of a villager if, if you've traded with him. Only do it if you've never traded with him, because if you do and you replace, even though you've replaced it with exactly the same table in exactly the same place, 
it's not the same workstation. So now that village up there and this villager here are associated with that workstation and it's broke the system. Now, we can't just fix it. Let's just get rid of him. So in order to fix that, I've had to I've had to dispose of the the villager that was there because he was associated with the wrong workstation and I've had to drop in a brand new villager. Now, if you don't want to kill the villager that's there and obviously villagers are quite, you know, they're quite precious, really. You shouldn't be just disposing of them willy nilly. Um, you can disassociate him from that workstation. Uh, in order to do that, you'll need to transport him 96 blocks away, double 48. They can detect a workstation within 48 blocks. So you'll have to send him 96 blocks away from here. And it can't be up or down. It has to be north, south, east or west. Send him 96 blocks away. He will forget about his workstation. Then you can bring him back, give him a new workstation. OK, so if you don't want to kill him and you've accidentally broken the workstation after you've traded with him which is something you just should not do then you can send him 96 blocks away so just to recap then before upgrading this to 1.14 make sure you replace all of the cauldrons around the back with solid blocks and make sure you put down a furnace with an item in it that's going to allow the comparator to pull a signal through in order to be able to open and close the trap doors at the top. Make sure that you transport all of the villagers that are in there 48 blocks away before you upgrade to 1.14. And then when you're transporting them back in again, do it one at a time. Pull in a villager, put him in a bay, put a workstation behind him. Pull in a villager, put him in a bay, put a workstation behind him and do it like that because if you mix them up as I say it's really really difficult unless you're uh, unless you have cheats enabled or you're an OP on a server it's really difficult to see whether or not you've got them in the wrong bay now bear in mind as well that they will only replenish their trades and they will only look for new workstations between 2000 and 9000 ticks if you bring a, an unemployed villager in here at any time of the day He'll be able to detect a new workstation. Brand new villagers with no professions will detect a workstation 24 hours a day. However, if you transport one of these guys away 96 blocks, so he'll forget about his workstation because you want to, uh, because you've messed up, or you want to, uh, you want to transport him to a different trading hall. You need to do that between 2,000 and 9,000 ticks or we won't forget about his workstation. OK, that's the, the key timings really are 2,000 to 9,000 ticks. That's when they do all of their trade upgrades. That's when they look for brand new workstations. OK, so if you do this carefully and meticulously, it's reasonably easy to do. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you upgrade the villager trading hall from 1.13 so it works in 1.14 if you've got any questions at all about this read the comments first read the description first because it's more than likely i've answered the question already down there that'll save you a lot of time asking the same question so if you have enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave it a like and if you've really loved it don't forget to subscribe for future videos this is fully off and i'm out of here